urgence right now. Scott, can you hear us? Yeah, I got you. Thank All you. Right. So I will call the meeting to order. And should we go around and do roll call? Sure. All right. Um, Lexi O'Brien, here. John Buck, here. Kevin, are you still here? Yep, no. Still okay. Katie Miller, here. Joe McGruder, here. Um, Scott Gresh, here. All right. Jill's my replacement. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> At the time I typed up the agenda, I didn't know Jill would be joining us. So is it okay if I introduce her first before yes. I go into approval of uh, yeah. minutes? Let's do that. So Jill McGruder, welcome. We're really excited to have you. Thank you. Um, and we're so thankful to Kevin for being on the board for such a long time and leading it for quite a long time as well. Um, so there is no cake. I didn't come through because I wasn't baking or shopping last week and <laughs> dropped the ball on that one. But at any rate, um, would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So Jill McGruder, I have been in Webster Groves for about nine years now. Um, I professionally work at the Signa Group, which acquired Express Scripts a couple of years ago um, as an environmental social governance senior advisor. So I am leading environmental, social reporting, and strategy for the Signet Group. Um, my, so a lot of that social component um, is around diversity, equity, inclusion, topics like healthy employees, um, community work. Um, so, so definitely some relevant there in my professional career. Um, and I also moved to St. Louis to work at Fleshman Hiller. I was there for about eight years. Um, so I have a lot of experience working on behalf of Missouri Foundation for Health and MoDOT, um, very much in kind of these community settings where, where we held a lot of open houses and, and we're getting kind of public feedback that way. Um, so yeah, I, you know, my interest in kind of joining the board really just stemmed from kind of current environment around police and community relationships. I think it's incredibly tough right now. Um, and, you know, would just love to kind of give back to the community where um, I, I plan on staying for the rest of my life. We just moved twice in the last couple of years, and I'm not planning on doing it again. Um, so, you know, this, I, I'm also more settled in my job in terms of work-life balance. So really, it was a great opportunity for me to look at uh, opportunities with Webster Groves and the boards and commissions that way. Right. Yeah. Well, that sounds like really wonderful um, yeah. background, too, that will help the board. So, okay. Well, welcome. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess we'll go with review and approval of minutes. And what should we do without Kevin's uh, <laughs> the eagle eye? Eagle eye. Um, did anyone have any adjustments to the minutes from the February 2018 meeting? I did not touch him. All good. Yeah. All right. Somebody want to move to approve them? So moved. Seconded. All right. Okay. Minutes are approved. Okay. Um, Chief Curtis, do you have any updates from the police department? Just very briefly. Um, we hope to make three job offers this week. We have three candidates, one's in the academy. One of North Carolina and one of South Carolina. So we're hoping that um, excuse me, the right thing in the process and hopefully we might have this week. Um, the council approved the purchase and installation of the flock cams. Uh, we talked about that. See uh, automatic license plate readers, and we're going to getting six of them. We're going to put them up to the interest of studies. No face recognition. They don't take any shots of any people, strictly license plate reader. Um, no traffic enforcement component to it. It's strictly for stolen autos and for uh, commission of uh, felony crimes. So we're hoping that that's going to help us uh, to some degree fighting uh, the auto theft and the uh, thefts from autos. 
We've also joined the uh, South Group Task Force, um, RLF Task Force, with um, Shrewsbury, us, uh, Sunset Hills, Kirkwood, the Pear, Glendale, Crestwood, and Rock Hill. And that's going to start next week. What kind of group is it? Did you see? It's the uh, Auto Theft Auto Prevention Task Force. Seems tiny. A lot of it will be covered. We're, we're going to dedicate uh, a supervisor and two officers uh, to it. Um, it probably will be you know, 25 people total, somewhere in that area. Focus is going to be on mainly on the highways, 44, 270, and then the arteries coming off of the highway success where groups are coming in and committing the uh, crimes. All right, so that's a collaboration on um, the um, actual offices as well as, are those the same people? Like, how do the flock cameras get used? Like, how is that data evaluated to help you identify? The license plate readers, again, they're only for if a car is reported stolen or if it's been reported involved in a uh, felony crime. The reader will check the plates when it goes through the camera. It will immediately alert every officer on an MDT in their vehicle. So if someone comes to the, you know, into the city and the car is wanted, it's a either stolen vehicle or a vehicle that was involved in the theft, it will alert the officers that that person is coming into the town. Obviously, uh, usually we'll have to work with six to eight officers on depending on, on the, the staffing. So they won't be able immediately, you know, catch them, but they'll know that they're in the, within the city limits. And that's when we would be, be alert to the fact that they're there and try and locate them. And that's because so often when somebody's looking for other cars to break into, they're driving in with a potentially a stolen car. The vast majority of the time, when a group, and it's usually what it is, it's a group of three to four people will come in. They're coming in in a car that was stole, either stolen or was involved in other thefts. Mm -hmm. Maybe usually that's a stolen model, but not always. But it also will capture other things. Mm -hmm. other time. But that's the, our primary purpose in trying to in, uh, implement it is to try and help us combat the auto thefts and the thefts and the autos that are occurring late at night, early in the morning. Uh, Chief? Yes, Sarah, sorry. I forget you. Oh, there. sorry. I didn't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know when we uh, first started the board, the uh, license plate readers were concerning for uh, driving up the uh, the uh, indices, you know, that are measured. Yeah, racial disparity indices. And uh, was that specific to, do you think being so specific to only looking for stolen cars and the like, that'll avoid that? I, obviously, we have to take care of that problem. I just was wondering if uh, we need to address this uh, to the community, if that's going to drive that rate up. In all honesty, it won't completely avoid it, but it's not, it shouldn't drive the rate up. It will still, probably, not probably, it'll definitely be uh, have a disparate impact, but to a much lesser degree. The, the uh, license plate readers that we had before in the vehicles, they were um, Capturing wanted for minor traffic violations um, and minor misdemeanors, right. those kind of things. So the cars were being stopped weren't cars that were involved in auto thefts or, or felony crimes. They were for minor things like, for instance, if somebody hit a taillight out in a North County Muni and right. didn't appear in court to be wanted, which would be on a plate, and then we get, we get hit on that, the officer would stop that. So this has no component that does that kind of thing. It's strictly for uh, auto theft right. and for uh, felony crimes. So it shouldn't even it be very, shouldn't very be a big crime. factor there. No, Good. It not. Great. I was curious, does it also alert when that vehicle leaves our it would alert, it would capture it if it if it captures it, it would it would also notify us that. But we the cameras are they're not cheap. So they're positioned so that it's Unlikely they'll catch them going out. It's more likely they're going to catch them coming in because their position coming down a big, big bit on the police station road and off of Elm. So if they're going the other way, it probably won't capture the place, but it's possible. But in any case, yeah, whatever it reads it or however it reads it, it will work the officers. I know I was reading also, there was an article in the, the Webster Kirkwood Times that I thought maybe also like if a certain kind of car was seen and reported as this was one that, like you you mentioned like your officers, that if they take off, they're not allowed to do high-speed chases, obviously in residential areas, but 
was there some thought that maybe they could identify the car then by looking at the footage on those cameras or? It has the potential to help an investigation. So if, <clears throat> say we have an auto theft or whatever it might be, and we get an alert from a car coming in, then we would know it's a good chance that that was the plate that was stolen, so it would help the investigation. But there's always a caveat to that, and that is if it's a stolen auto, what happens is they'll usually just drop the car here, get the other car and leave, so it's not, it's not going to have to, I know one of the things that, that the, the vendor, the flock, promotes is that would help us on investigations. And it will to some degree, but it's much less likely to help in that area than it is on us trying to be proactive to prevent the crime from happening initially. So, um, you know, the, the other part of that is that um, when the officers uh, get alerted and they're looking for it, then um, they'll be like said, they'll be aware of it, but it's not likely to help us in the other aspect of the investigation. But it could, it's a possibility. It does capture all the data. But again, one of the things and one of the reasons that we're going to use it is it purges everything after 30 days to make sure that data is not used for anything other than its intended purpose. Right. right. And it also requires a person to look at video if you were going to use it for investigations, probably. Yes. Unless it's got some yes. kind of data tagging that it can find things, but that would be. Well, it, kept, it will capture. I mean, I can't say that it, it's, there's no invasion of privacy at all. It captures every place that goes through. So right. any car that goes through the camera is actually captured and held mm -hmm. with on the database. But none of those plates will ever see the light of day mm -hmm. unless they're on a stolen vehicle or a vehicle that was involved in the crime. So right. it, it captures an immense amount of data. So, so there's a possibility that we could use it for something like that. But it's less likely than it's a preventative tool. Okay. And we're going to use, we did, we've done a three release on the cameras and we're, other cities have had um, some success with it. So we're going to see how successful it is and, and um, how much it helps. And if we think it's a positive thing after three years, we'll do it. And if it's not, then after three years, we won't do it. Okay. Thank you. All right, if it's because we really researched it, and especially talking to the cities around us that have the cameras, which are quite a few. And we haven't found any kind of significant negative consequences from it, but if for some reason we should discover that, we can always just cut it off or not mm -hmm. renew it after three years. So, um, all right, thank you. Um, so the next item on the agenda is um, a feedback form on the website. So we had talked about this. Jenny Stuckey had some time to be able to take a look at uh, mocking up something based on what we had discussed earlier. And Dale, I don't know if you can, uh, can you share that link or I don't know how to share it with Scott. I can try and bring it up. You said you mentioned it, I think I've got it. Or if you can't bring it up, if you could grab it from, since you're running this, if you could grab it from your email and paste it into the um, chat yeah, at I'm least. trying to share my screen. Awesome. Uh, so I have double click on the bear on the screen that in the bottom to the left. That's working. So stop yeah. share. Stop yeah, share. I, I need to bring this up first and thanks. Now, right there, that will, none of, yeah, not that box, the box above it will share your entire screen. So, so. I think that, can you see that, Scott? Or is that, that's not being shared? Yeah, I could see your email. Yeah. Okay. So, which or one something. is like? That would be that um, first, first one? one right there. This is it? You might not see, you might not see that. Oh. One. Can you see that one? No, yeah. that's oh, all right. So they're just sharing stop, your outlook. Yeah, stop share. And Sorry. Stop yeah, sharing. there you go. If you do whole screen, I think you'd have to click submit though. I think you clicked your screen, but not the red button. Oh, maybe it is. Are you seen it now, Scott? It says form center. Can you see it now? Uh, I see, yeah. I do. Engagement awesome. feedback form. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. So uh, well done. And I've got a hard copies if anybody uh, doesn't want to look up at the screen. But um, so we had talked about having a feedback form on our website um, and enabling someone to be able to provide feedback to us and right. do so anonymously. So that's why the, the stuff that shows up above, um, Jenny was going to look, apparently the default setting shows that, but she's going to look at just showing the forms part, which you know, is what I've got on this piece of paper I can craft around it. Um, so the idea being they have the option to include more information, um, but the main two pieces are your question, concern, or feedback. And then this last one was, how would you like the Police Community Engagement Board to respond? I'm not sure that's the right way to phrase it, but I wanted to get at the idea of, are you just wanting to issue, you know, right. give us some feedback? Or are you wanting us to respond back to yes. you? Do you want us to do some research? Would you like us to post something on our website? Um, I think that that question, the way I put it there, is maybe too vague. And we can talk about that and maybe get your ideas a little. Um, and then I wanted to also have a a uh, place where we identify the appropriate channel for questions that are for the police department specifically. Right. Um, so if you have questions for the police department, you visit our FAQ page, or maybe it should be linking to the police department site. This form will be on our site and the left rail does have links to the police department site. Um, and also that they can email to Curtis directly. Um, then it has a little spam catcher and uh, then they can submit their form. That's great. Um, do I have any thoughts? And I know you're just now seeing this. I left it very open-ended. Um, but on that second question and whether that might be more likely to cause confusion. Should we have more of that? I I almost wondered if there could be choices, like a multiple choice, like um, how would you like follow up email, um, discussion of the next meeting, no follow up necessary, or something like that. And then you can always add in other email. field. Yeah, um, I agree. Then you get more yes responses. I agree. Well, we can only respond if they put their name and contact information there. True. Right. So. And I, I think that if we say email, uh, we'd have to know we must provide you in the right field. Right. Um, question. I, I was poking around our form center last May. Um, I noticed we have a police satisfaction survey, too, on the police page. And will that cause confusion if we have both of these? Um, are both of them necessary? Do we get a lot? Do you know if we get a lot of hit through that? We probably get yeah. maybe half a dozen a year. Okay. Yeah. So not many. Yeah. Probably okay. Uh, there's a ton of forms on our city website. Um, so I think when, and I, I saw this in the minutes last meeting. Definitely like QR code, like kind of making this the awareness promotion piece of this will be really important if we want people to use it. Just, I, I find it kind of not easy to navigate all the forms we have. Um, yeah, the, there's quite a few of them. Now, I think also our hope was that this would be embedded right on our main page, but yeah. you're right. Awareness of our page is also yes. very, very low. Yes. Um, so I, I agree with that and we should absolutely talk about awareness as, as a, another point today. Um, all right. Well, I think probably that drop down with choices would be easy and it always has other that someone could freeform tell us, um, how, what other kind of response they may want. The other topic that we've talked about before in association with this is having, um, 
a process by which we ensure that these are responded to in a timely way and that it doesn't become you know, a burden on us. I do not want to anticipate that we're going to get a ton of inquiries on this, especially not early on. Um, I know Chief Curtis volunteered that he would be willing to read all of them and forward them on. I just wanted to raise the question, though, that some of the survey response was directly to not being comfortable with emailing Chief Curtis. Now, maybe that's because, um, well, it's your personal email, and maybe they wanted to give some feedback anonymously. Um, I don't, know, we, I don't know it's not being transparent or not, but it doesn't have to be my email. It can be a general email box for PCB that I can check. Yeah. So they wouldn't know that it was coming to me. But again, I don't want, I, if you all feel that that's not transparent enough, I think it should be a service account like that, like a generic one. So if you're out of town or someone else can find it, they have to. Well, this is, well, this wouldn't actually, so that's the next question of what happens to this. And so, what we're saying is that this form would basically generate an email that would go to that service account. I don't know if I feel like that's entirely transparent. Like I, I think I'd want to acknowledge it if that's what we're doing because it has been called out. But someone that really did feel, you know, apprehensive about it. I, I mean, if it's anonymous, I just think that's. We've addressed that concern. And so I just want to be transparent about what our process is. Right. And so to have some kind of footnote about, you know, we'll respond to you within whatever time frame we say is right. suitable. I think we also should acknowledge, you know, we don't operate like as a unit without any. I mean, we collaborate with the police department and, and with the city. Right. And so I think we need to make clear that, you know, it's not like, I don't know, how do they say it? We're not a body that does, has any uh, ability to um, address concerns or I mean, we can address we concerns. Have, we, we don't, don't have, have an oversight. Well, we don't have an oversight role. Thank you. Yeah. Those are the words. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that, that it's correct is board doesn't have a formal oversight authority, but Katie said here, and so has Kevin, when we've had a couple of issues that concern the community, and we are, the board is more than welcome to ask questions about that, make inquiries about it. And I, I feel fairly confident that we've been very transparent in responding to those inquiries and questions. So even though you don't have formal oversight, you definitely have the ability to ask questions that the community may not either feel comfortable with or call directly about that we can get into. And one of the other things that I thought about today, and I apologize both to John and Jill, and you, I think like I said, I did, although I think I did send you a package when you got appointed. At some point, it might, I, don't, I don't know if Katie wants to sit through it again, but it might be a good idea to go over all the material that we did at the onset, which kind of goes over the policies and procedures, how we do things, why we do things, what, what we try to you know present to the community, show some videos on, on how the police react to certain things and why we do things the way that we do. I think it would give you a better picture if and when those things happen, because unfortunately, the cops are human, we're not perfect, they make mistakes. Hopefully, most of the time, they're not serious errors, but we do make mistakes and we want to be able to be transparent about how we handle it and correct it and address it. So it takes a considerable amount of time. So I don't know if you want to set some time aside for the new members of the board that we go kind of go through that again just to be helpful in the future. Yeah, I don't think I mean I got the packet and it's like an, an overwhelming <laughs> information, which I think as you point out, our forms the library is overwhelming. I think probably we've got all the information anyone ever asked for available, they just don't know how to find it because there's so much. And with Jill coming on board and I don't know if Centron saw all that Centron either. Presence, so I think that cool. would be really helpful to give us a walkthrough. Um, 
maybe at the next meeting, we'll figure out if it's the next one. Um, Whatever you want to fit it in, okay. just so we know we can do that. Right. So we did that initially. The board probably went through a couple of meetings where we went through all the material. Right. And it is a very large amount of material. Um, I wonder over here yes. um, if we had a default. If we had a default, uh, which just said we will discuss your concerns at our next meeting uh, as the default, and that way they can stay anonymous. And they can be invited to come to the meeting, uh, like I'm. I'm here in this way, uh, and then if they want other ways for us to respond, then that's the. Or you can respond with choice one, two, or three. I wondered if that might be helpful. Just as the default, we're going to talk about it. Ah, that's well. That would also give us. I don't want to say an out, but if that's our default, that we'll talk about concerns, right? um then no one would be expecting an email they'll we'll have to specifically like tell us how do you want to hear back well i think it's also i think it's good as i'm hearing it scott if, if i'm hearing it the way you're trying to explain it which is like you could say um you know we will discuss this at the next meeting you're welcome to come and or you could get these responses, but please know that it goes through uh, a general email, which is checked by Chief Curtis and passed along to us. And so that they do know what the process would be. Um, again, not in a punitive way, like this is just how it, it logically is working at this time. So and it doesn't have to be me. I mean, like I said, I bought, I, I, yeah. I'm open to doing that, but if you want just a generic box that you all can check, my understanding from Jenny is that from our IT, it's not a problem to set it up, but you all just have to remember have or sign somebody that will be checking. Right. So I almost feel the need to have a flow chart. People will put information into this form, we'll tell them that our default mode will be that we'll discuss it at the next mm -hmm. meeting. But they can choose, you know, if like additional means of follow up our email, um, email, other. I don't think I'd be comfortable calling someone. I agree. Um, and besides that, um, if if someone says I want a response by email or they want some other form of response, any response that we would have, we would want to be able to, to loop in right, to put us in the city. So why don't we just give them the option that we we'll respond by email? Because if we're going to rule out calling, which I which I, I, I get that, mm -hmm. we can, that way we can, you know, we can, if you want an email response, make sure you put your email address above and we'll respond within. Right, so if an email is in there, we yep. will respond to them by email. Okay. I'm also curious within within a time frame of a couple yes. weeks or something, or give us time to review it. An expectation setting. The other part of that is, is if it is something that's serious, and we wait, it's, put a two week hold on it. That can be problematic. So hopefully, if someone has something that's actually a serious issue, it's not going to sit there for even more than twenty four hours. Something we need to pick up on and address immediately. Yeah, which is why it's you know a good idea of yours that it be something that you would want to see. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as we acknowledge that, um, our process will be that we'll discuss concerns at the next meeting. Um, or you can provide us, in addition, you can provide us an email if you want a response that way. Um, and please know that uh, here's our process, that it goes to a service account. And Chief Curtis, so tell me, when you check it, that's to be able to get, if there's an urgent issue, to expedite it. If it's something that looks like it's serious, yeah, I mean, we'll let you make you aware of it, but it's something that we would look into immediately. The other thing, I mean, it can get a little complicated in that mm -hmm. there is a process for complaints. So someone has a serious complaint, 
what I would would I would certainly make you aware of it, but I would also try and solicit some information from them that we could actually address it and file it and do a formal complaint on it. It's even it's even more so now since the state passed the statute on health civil okay. rights. There's certain things that we have to follow if we're going to do any kind of investigation. But the office, the rights of the officers are entitled to. So it does add a layer. And to be honest with you, I'm not that excited about it. I mean, I, the officers do need some protection. And I think some of it's legitimate, but I think they went a little past being a benefit and hindering some kind of some of the investigations in some way. So it's if I said it's a little complex, but we can navigate it. But there's some serious we do we do need to try and identify it, pin it down, and actually do some kind of investigation. Right, right. Well, and that's for community safety and also for the safety of the officers. So um, I'm just kind of running through my head sort of what does this statement look like that describes, you know, sort of, or do we even need to say that? As long as we say the process is that Chief Curtis will forward the concerns. Why is he forwarding it? So is it that we would never check it otherwise? It seems to me like they're, so that would be the only way they're just going to spit out an email. It's not like there's a forum center where we see all the inquiries, because that was one way I was thinking. If we're committing to talk about it at our next meeting, each meeting, part of our goal could be to, you know, look into the hopper and see how many the inquiries are, and we talk about them. Mm -hmm. I don't anticipate getting it. Again, it's your option, no. but. I get paid, that's my job, so I get paid to do the stuff. You all don't, but you're more than welcome you know, oh. you can, to, to have somebody assigned to look at it every day and bypass me. But Oh, no, 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 okay. I'm absolutely fine with you doing it. What I'm trying to think about is what are you forwarding? Like, what is the purpose of it? So if someone says, I want an email response, It's going to a generic box. Yeah, it's going to a generic box. There's box. Any, any reason. We don't know anything unless they provide right. it. And yeah. so we're and we're saying Chief Curtis is checking this. I'm just trying to think like there's no reason that you all right. don't, don't have access and can look at it anytime you please. It's just like I said, right. just that for the most part, I'm here every day. I get paid to do that, make sure that nothing slips through the cracks. But so, so we could say that the, the, the email is accessible to all board members, including, I forget what they call you in Emerson. You're not here. I'm the liaison of an ex-officio member. Yes, ex-officio, including an ex-officio members or something like that. Because you're just saying as a consumer or a citizen, you, you might want to know who's going to see my email. Mm -hmm. And... And that could make it so that I don't want to send an, or get an email response, or it might make it that, oh, I don't care, or, I, you know, it just gives that person choice of how they want their information received and dealt with. Well, the response. I, I love No, it's not cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I like uh, just like when somebody calls my office that you start right away with saying for serious issues, you should be contacting right. such and so directly. Just like I say in my office, if you have a serious medical problem, call 911 and get to the hospital. And it seems right. dumb to have to say that uh, on every single thing, but we do. And that uh, provides a clear statement right away. Then step two, default. Like We're going to yeah, follow yeah, this organization. Fair. Then step three is we can have these other choices if you so choose. I like that, I like that too. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, and then we can say, you know, you'll get a response either from departmental leadership or the advisory board. And FYI, we meet once a month, so it may be a little delayed, but we'll get back to you. I mean, we just tell them that's what the schedule we want. And it gives you, Chief, the, the chance to kind of just check it off the list and come back to us at the end of the month saying, hey, I got two of these. Here was the response. We can discuss those here. We're made aware. We say good job. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we've done our job. Oh, I said, I think that there aren't going to be, there won't be a lot of less things uh, or beyond what I think are going to be. I don't think gonna, there's going to be a lot of correspondence. Like I said, we had that survey, so if people are happy, they can talk. We may get six 
responses mm -hmm. that I hear maybe a couple of them are negative and the rest of them are positive. So it's as long as the, the bottom line is as long as things are going well and people are pleased yes. or whatever, you don't hear, you don't hear anything. <laughs> you, people are not pleased that you hear something. Yeah. Um, which I was thinking that I'm on the form. I'm just curious why we need to have another line that says other questions. That I, I think what we've just talked about starting out for serious issues, contact um, yeah. the police department directly, and then I think we should list the means of contact. So it would be, you know, obviously a phone number, dial 911 if it's an emergency. I can't imagine anyone would come to our page in that case, but uh, we'd list the your email and uh, maybe the non-emergency number. Um, and then can Jenny impose a character limit? What's submitted? Like 200 words. She can do that. Sure, but they can do that. Still, I've like, got some open ended rambling diatribe of just stuff. This. Would you get that? Who, would, I was gonna say, who <laughs> would do that? Who would do that? <laughs> I was just thinking back that we had a lot of conversation about if, if we needed to email a response, who was going to craft it and who had to review it. and that's kind of what's in the back of my mind is if someone does request an email response, that's the process we haven't talked about yet. Because obviously they can hear us talk about it at the next meeting, but if they want an email response, should we put that one next? I think if it's something urgent or certainly needs some kind of take care of it. Take right. us. <laughs> if there are things that would be a good, I mean, frankly, it's a good exercise for us mm -hmm. to talk about what citizen concerns or observations are. I think that's useful for for me just to understand, you know, what some others might be thinking about, and then we can figure out. And maybe that we can take volunteers to draft something, but we can send back a response from the service account. Probably say thanks for your concern that you submitted. To, Police Community Engagement Board discuss this, and here's our feedback for you. And go away or come again or <laughs> tune in to the next meeting if you'd like to. But I would see that like as a couple of us could come maybe parse a lot and draft something that the group could endorse if it's something that she hasn't already, you know, quickly okay. knocked off the list for us. In all honesty, it's something that looks like it could be policy violation or criminal. <clears throat> but hopefully, don't need those. That's something that's investigated. <clears throat> we can certainly talk about it, but it really, that would, I would have to address that. That would be something that sure. we would yeah. respond to really. But operation, again, I mean, that's uh, it's one of the good things about the board. I know we can a lot of it yet, but uh, you get recommendations for things for us to do or not to do, the policies or whatever that might be that's helpful for the community or, or positive for the community. And we, I think that's an important role for the board and for the community uh, with input from the board. I am taking lots of notes. What I'm going to do is after this meeting, I'll write those up and I'll mock up what this, you know, beginning and end might be, um, as we've discussed. And, me, let's see. Yes. From, from last, sorry, from last meeting, I should have done the updates. We're going to start doing probably a bi-weekly um, bio on each of the officers. Jenny's going to help Captain Spear do oh. a little video, probably like maybe another half or two minute snapshot. And we'll put it up on the, on the Facebook and um, sitting in the police page. That's great. Um, going back to kind of email responses and the general mailbox for this, I guess, is it reasonable to ask the board members to like check in on a weekly basis and then kind of a, you know, if it's an email response needed, someone volunteers to draft it and then kind of circulate via email if it's more urgent than like waiting till the next meeting. Um, you just, not, I know that more time uh, outside monthly meetings but i mean that's something i would be happy to do in terms of like a weekly check see if anything's come in and kind of spearhead you know like draft responses this is where we spent a lot of time at other meeting 
um, trying to figure out the logistics of that. Yeah. And yeah. Obviously, it's probably a very low burden <laughs> in mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, so I think that we can certainly do that. I came prepared with sheets that we could write up if people wanted to sign up. Like I would check this, but it's mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I can make a note that that you would be interested in doing yeah. that. Yeah. And um, I think it's the kind of thing that if it ever becomes more of a burden, um, right. then we can always have a sign up sheet, right. and yeah. you know other yeah. people could say, "Hey, I'll take the next two months and you get a little sabbatical." Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so Julie, you would volunteer to draft a response that it yeah. comes sooner. And this is where we talked about who would we need to look at that draft because we don't want to mm -hmm. cross over into policy territory or other things. So right. Dale, can you remind me those that was a while ago and I'm not sure all the details. What did we decide? If if Julie would, would Jill, draft Jill, 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 Jill. Jill. Yeah. no, you're fine. sorry. <laughs> So if, if Jill would draft a response, how what what would a good process look like so that we're in the good graces of you know the, the city and, and police policy issues? Is that something that you think she should send sure. to everybody on the PCEB, including you and in, in general, it's not likely to be an issue, but it would it would be helpful and be to your benefit as well, you know, for him to take yeah. a look at it. Yeah. If it is something that's a policy violation, you still could respond to it, but you probably, I mean, that's probably mm -hmm. what you would need to say is that it's an issue that would have to be directed to the police department and then we would do an investigation. And part of our policy on investigations is that we send a registered letter, make sure that people got this is what the response was, we investigated, this is the result of it, that there was discipline. We never say what the discipline was, but we say that what we find was. You know, the complaint was legitimate and there was discipline administered. Um, again, it's sent the register letters so that they that we can confirm that they got, got a response. And you're going to be looking at these daily as well, just in case there are serious issues that you want to be able to jump on right away. Right. Yeah. So and if we can kind of keep track of what's coming in. If we're getting a lot of policy or criminal, even you know, we'll we'll have like a playbook standard. I'd be surprised if that's a problem. Yeah. I really would. I just don't wish to stop that. Or, I just, you know, yeah. Obviously, sometimes it's depending on what the issue is. Nobody likes for the police to get involved and interject in such situations. So people aren't always happy. But in all honesty, we have pretty good workforce. We have pretty good culture. We have pretty good policies. So we legitimately have very few complaints. Uh, very few times we find that where we have to sustain a, a complaint that's a policy violation. Excuse me. A basic question, Chief. Uh, policy meaning all of the like the police documents that are on your website, the, like referring to those policies. All of the general orders. Okay. The general orders are the basic policies, but then we also have some special, special orders and memos that coincide with that. Those aren't, aren't all on, on the uh, Online, mm -hmm. but they're all related to the policies that are there. And I don't know, what is there here? About 300 pages? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started poking through some and then I had to stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the important ones, you know, looking at arrest, use of force, um, yeah. you know, things like the it's, it's good to be aware of that if you're on the board, but I'd say 80% of it are housekeeping and administrative stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. It's hard to get to the weeds, but you know, if you like, if you enjoy that, dig into it. Reading. Yeah, you look like you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Fortunately, we're at the point now where it's 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 maintenance, but um, yeah, it wasn't on me. But I we had to go through the whole that whole thing when we went through Tweed for the first time, and it's a Herculean task both mm -hmm. for the person who wrote it and uh, it's a little bit dry reading for me as well. <laughs> All right, good. Thanks. Well, let's move on. The next item that I have on here, I want to push it off to next month. Hopefully, Scott will be able to join us. Sunshine, maybe will have a chance to 
give us her purpose. And, mm -hmm. and Jill, if you want to talk for a few minutes after, I'll try yeah. to fill you in a little bit better than sure. just sending you a agenda and meetings last, yeah. Yeah, minutes good. from last meeting. Um, because this purpose really needs to reflect, you know, the entirety of the board. Um, and that also leads me to the next bullet that I have on the agenda, which is recruiting additional board members. I think we still have a couple of vacancies, a clergy member. And I know Emerson isn't here today, but he emailed me uh, during the mid month that he thinks maybe he's got a lead on someone. He's trying to coax them into it. Um, and then we also have um, a business owner position that I believe is vacant. Right, Paul Dietrich? I think that's correct. So um, uh, I gather that the, the city council is just working and doing the process to fill those vacant positions. They advertise for it and they announce it. It comes it all basically stems from the city clerk's office, but it's <clears throat> it's difficult. To make sure that people are aware of their openings, and it's also difficult to find people who are actually are interested in what are openings. I think as long as we, I, mean, I think it's important to have a business owner and clergy, but I think as long as we have a group as large as what we got right now, we're, we can operate and kind of successfully until we get some additional members. As a new member yourself, and I, I'm new fairly recently, do you think it would be helpful for people to understand what are the expectations for a board member? Yeah, I think absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we haven't written this down anywhere. I mean, we've kind of, that's part of the exploration of the purpose. Yes. And I think each board president may have their own set of expectations. I'm still trying to find my way there. I would like this to be very collaborative, but all within the confines of, of ensuring that we're on the right side of the Sunshine Law. Um, and so I just, um, we haven't written up expectations. Yeah. But that's something maybe for the website. Um, Lexi, do you want me to take a, a draft and try? Yes, okay. as our most recent board president, that would be great. Okay. In terms of what the city is doing to recruit, I feel like it's probably a given, um, but do we have like a local business chamber that has regular meetings and can kind of close, close opening there for, for boys and commissions? Um, again, this probably crossed their minds already, but when I heard business owner, I just, yeah, think of, they're, they're probably all getting together at, at some other venue at a, on a regular basis, so kind of getting in front of them that way. I know at least one of our city council members is also a local business owner. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, they might be sharing in those. I, when I emailed Emerson, I asked him you know, before I knew about you, I was like, what about all these great volunteers you have with Webster Rock Hill Ministries? Maybe right. there's someone who's done that and they're like ready for something with, you know, the, the city and, and might want to do that. So, yeah. The business students have a meeting here every Tuesday morning, so they're aware, they are aware of it. But Emerson really thinks he has somebody, a clergy person who might be. He did. Okay. He did. I don't want to divulge who it was okay. because I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, he doesn't send be... it around to everybody, and I'll let Emerson share the news himself. He might okay, be good. here next okay. Sunday. So, all right. Um, so the next topic, and Sloan is not here for us to be able to see it, but so Sloan is our student representative. She's a student at Webster Girls High School. And um, one of the things that we've been wanting to do is, is have some kind of mark that we could put on 
name badges if we attend events just to meet people yeah. in the community. And so I have a few copies. And uh, Dale, can you go to the next link in that email? I will try. And share. I got lucky the first time. So well, because I was better than a lot. We're great. That over. Did Slim do this? That's so she fun. did. Um, so it's, I think it's maybe just still loading. Let's get rid of this. Let's see if I can come back from here. Are you able to see that, Scott? Uh, it's cropping off yes. a good part of it, though, isn't it? If you scroll down on the screen, will it show more of it? You can also hit edit design and we'll, we'll at least show oh, the yeah. Board. And then just don't hit anything else. <laughs> oh, no, mind. No, if you do, if you accidentally. Oh, no. Yeah, I thought it was. Oh, I thought it was. It's okay, not, well, it's not when they go up or down for some reason. I think it might have something to do with it being a fairly high resolution image that's embedded in there and on the, the screen being pretty small. It's not going to do that unless you sign in. You won't be able to adjust it. It's going to give you a thumbnail of it. Yeah. So it showed up just great on my computer. Scott, mm -hmm. I don't. The camera is like so way far up there is not to be able to see it. And there's no way to scroll down. Yeah. Um, well, so that was her last week, wasn't it? Last, week, did you see last it? month. And we looked at it. And the only thing that we've refined is sort of the logo mark. So uh, the first social media post that we were putting together was around card that because it was so much conversation now. And I think everyone had signed off on that social media ad, but we wanted to get Jenny uh, Starkey, our, um, I don't know go. what her official look, title look is, she's she's public look relations. Look oh, yes. Oh, good. Yay, now Scott can see it. <laughs> so this is the social media. Um, and as you can see, that's, pretty large on your screen. So the mark for police community engagement board is gonna get pretty small when it's actually featured in a social media channel. Um, and on this little one pager where I just did screen grabs of all of them, I showed the logo mark. So we had input from the team I wanted you all to know that we did look at the other font that was the Sierra font that's official for the city. And it just seemed to be too busy with this very flourishy Webster Groves piece that the, the font for Police Community Engagement Board really looked better without the Sierra sign. I agree. So we just made a recommendation. This is it. <laughs> And we have a larger version that could be, you know, on a name badge. Um, but we also have this small, like a song off that we can put on our social media posts. So I just wanted to share that with you all. And I'll reach out to Jenny and ask her how soon she can get us slotted in to run these posts. I'll have these available. We'll get the artwork. Jenny has a template we can use for name badges. Um, she's been pretty swamped with uh, city communications this last week, um, but I'm sure she'll get back to us and we'll actually get those name badges for when we are going out. So we'll just print one for each of us in advance that you can keep with you. And so if you're ever at a community event and want to represent the PCEB, um, you'll be able to do that. So. Will these be for Webster Groves social media channels, or I know it's, we've got one for our police. This oh, had, yes, had to think about following on it, but <laughs> we could work on that too. We um, were thinking about yeah. doing it on the cities. Uh, yeah. We definitely didn't want to start one for the PCEB. Yeah. <laughs> agreed, agreed. No, okay, perfect. 
Um, are we good there, Leslie? Okay. Yes, we are good. Um, do you want to, can you click through the next link? There was a logo lockup, just in case Scott wants to see it. It says final logo kit. That's the last link, I promise. There you go. I probably can't see that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> there again. Can you click your blue Zoom icon down in the footer? Will that bring it up? Mm -hmm. Just get this up a little bit, but I'm not sure. Can't do it. This one you want? Yeah. There you go, Scott. So you know what we finalized. That's with the city's official mm -hmm. fonts. Yeah, looks great. That's what we saw last week, last yep. time, I think. Yeah. It's pretty close. All right. So with our first one approved and running. We need ideas for the next one because we don't want to push out a post and then not have something to follow up. And so I would like to solicit any suggestions folks have for next the, post. The feedback. That's what I thought. That, yeah, yeah, if we've got that up and running. Yeah. Definitely put <clears throat> there. Summer vacation themed one. Yeah. Oh. You know, this is in July, but I mean, the, the fireworks come up every year yeah. about the, the noise and that kind of thing. That could be another one. Yeah. I think we probably need to have a, a calendar, right? An editorial calendar for what, what we think would be good topics. So to me, I think the fireworks would be a good one to have. In maybe May and June. Yeah. Um, you don't want to wait until July, then it's right. too late, though. Right. So, um, do you think summer vacation is that we want to come up with something for April, which is, you know, practically here? And then we have May. Can April be the feedback form, or is that too fast of a turnaround? Let me ask. Um, Jenny Starkey, if she can get it done, um, if I write up and we get a mock up to everybody, and Dale, you know, how can we uh, get approvals from everyone or edits conversely from the board before the next meeting? Because our next meeting isn't until the end of April, and I think we're going to want to at least be designing the next post so that it gets approved and hopefully even sharing. Can I send something out and ask everyone to respond with yep. an answer and then I come back and say, here's the vote tally? Or what, what can we do? <clears throat> Related I think that's problematic. I should you say yes, you can do it. I just think that it's probably crosses over the line with the sunshine violation. Um, if you wanted to have, say, like a brief Zoom meeting, 15 or 20 minutes, where you all could be on there, and, and um, I can let Katie know when that's going to be, and we can, public, we can post that as a public discussion on PCV. That would probably be, I think, the best way to do it without actually meeting. And that would satisfy the uh, sunshine law as well. Okay. Is everyone who's here open yeah. to a mid month mm -hmm. meeting? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. I think we're a small enough group that. Okay. All so, right. Just remember, we have to get 24 hour notice. So, what? Just you let me know. Absolutely. The, the time frame on it. Um, Make sure Katie please. Not to bring us back, but we're checking kind of the week the mailbox weekly for comments from the feedback form. 
we talked about I draft response and email it to the board. Oh, but so you, we, but we you can't... would have no feedback. Right. Okay, it sounds like that. As long as it's not a discussion with a quorum, that's that'd be okay. If you were doing so, if you were doing something, if you're doing something on your own and you're just informing the board, this is what I did, okay. and you're not having a discussion about it, okay. whether or not to accept it, et cetera, et cetera, I think that you'd be okay there. I think I'm not by Neil, I'm sure, but I think that would be all right. So just one of you are saying. This is a suggestion that we need to <clears throat> discuss or we need to do something with when you make when you don't make a decision on it until there's a meeting. Uh, ah, so okay. the key is that the decision point has to be in the public eye or available. A discussion of the decision point. Okay. So I mean, like you said something said, this is the farm that I think we should all be able to use. I we send it out to everybody, and there's no comments on it, and there's not a discussion of it. Yeah, we should do this or we should change it. I'm pretty sure you're okay there. Okay. You know, I just thought a mid-month Zoom would also be a great time to talk about if there were any input on the forum that we thought, well, this was really, you know, yeah, we don't want to wait till the end of the month. This is right. something we want to discuss right. now. Okay. So out of the ideas that we discussed. What do we think for April? Is it summer vacation? Is that too soon to talk about summer vacation? I'm talking about April or May. I'm talking about April. Okay, because the eight. agenda says May, because April would be, because it's almost April in like two days. So wouldn't April be the car theft and then May, which is what is on the agenda. So I'm sorry, sure I'm gonna... not sure I'm following. But these would be. Well, these are, yeah, these aren't going to actually run in in March. So this would run in April. But I'd like to see, I would love to have a pace that it was every two weeks. We'd have yeah. To me, every month is yeah. too infrequent. I agree. Yeah. And so if we could have another idea for April and summer vacation is maybe that's the end of April or the first part of May. Oh, yeah, so maybe May. At some point, uh, maybe identity theft around tax season. You know, kind of play with oh, tax day. Okay. Um, yeah. She planned your birthday. Do a big birthday one. <laughs> is, that, is that in June? <laughs> I'm not gonna let you do the bathroom. Okay? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, there, it could be something like uh, bike safety, that kind of thing. Helmets. You know, once you get into the warmer weather and people get outside, you know. I don't know, that's a little bit outside of our purview, but. Um, well, we also can go through the lease department. Uh, I mean, we got the material for this from, was it your own Facebook it's account? Facebook yeah. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> why not it's copy? It's not unique to us, unless it's pretty much universal for this area, but every police department has some, that or something like it on their yeah. Facebook page. Yeah. Well, and I know I've seen uh, advisories about identity theft and um, bike safety isn't one that I thought of. Is everyone okay if I meet with Sloan, we look at some ideas and we'll mock something up. And then when we have this mid-month Zoom, hopefully we can share that. And if you all like it, we can run with it, and that can be for the last part of April. Yeah. Yes. I and with the, I also think another one could be depending on how long yeah. it, um, but not for April or May, probably maybe May. Um, yeah. Like the statement of purpose, if it's short enough, could be one. Yes, I think that would be good. I think probably statement of purpose. We won't meet again until the end of April. So I think that's probably going to end up being June before we be yeah. able to like share it more broadly. And also I noticed like with, you know, not that we're going to be like 
influencers or anything like that. But like sometimes, you know, the there are repeat posts. I mean, some of these things, like the statement of purpose, could be something that's run several times a year. Mm -hmm. Or um, yeah, I think that things it, or the the um, feedback form like that could be run several times a year and not just yes. once a year. So I have April. We could look at something about identity theft. That would be a second one for April. For May, the feedback form. Pretty confident that we can get it up during May. Um, and then we'll look at summer vacation and see how the timing feels. Um, in June, we would definitely want one about fireworks. And then we've also got this idea of bike safety. I'm going to put together a little editorial calendar um, that also will let Sloan you know, work ahead a little bit if there are some that she wants to do. Um, and I'm just blithely committing her time. I'm not sure how much time she will have to commit as we go into the summer. She may well have a summer job that requires a lot of attention. And so um, we'll either have to switch off Canva do a tool I know, or that someone else knows, or we can use something that I know how to do. But I'm sure that Sloan will give me some some pointers on it. So I'm and I'm familiar with Canva. You're familiar yep. with Canva. Yep. Um, don't want to go down a whole different route, but if we plan on attending community events or, or even having like a community officer at those, kind of maybe promoting that on social, like, hey, oh, come, come oh. talk to us, we're going to be here. Um, so I'm sure the city will run similar, you know, if it's using like the 4th of July festival as an example, right. I think they usually post about it, kind of tag along. Yeah, isn't the art fair usually, yeah, like the like beginning of June, um, stuff like that. Jazz, yeah, the jazz, the jazz, jazz, that's yeah. usually September maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's just things like that where if we plan to have a presence kind of either tagging along the existing post that he's going to do or um, doing our own as part of the calendar, yeah. Yeah, and I think that we should also, when we know we're going to do that, we should have a little spot on our webpage where we know where we're going to yeah. have members yeah. attended. Speaking of um, events that we might attend, we feel like we're done talking about social media. I'm going to come up with a social, uh, an editorial calendar. I'll work with Sloan on some other ideas. And then we get this mid-month Zoom scheduled. Hopefully, we'll have new designs to share for uh, a post in uh, the first part of April. First half of April, not the first half of April, the second half of April. I don't know why March is still in my head. Mm -hmm. That's the present. It's what almost is over, isn't it? Um. Okay, so. We've got topics, we've approved the PSAs and the logo mark. Um, one thing I, I did want to bring up uh, is in the most recent newsletter, this is that child safety um, event. I don't know if you shared that link with me, John, or whether it was, uh, it was another oh, social media. Sorry, I saw you post like saw on Twitter about it. It was the Twitter. So, um, but there's a child safety fair that's happening in Webster Groves. I think there are a number of organizations that are uh, putting it on and the city of course is promoting it. Um, uh -huh. It is on April 1st from 9.30 to 11.30 at the rec center. So if there's anyone interested, there's no way we'll have our badges. I don't know if Jenny's received them yet. She was gonna order them. But, um, you know, if you're interested in going, I don't know yet whether I can make it or not. Is there? No, it's out of it. I could probably go. How? That's like, the thing. We, right, like, what, when you go to someone <laughs> else's event and yeah. you don't have a table and you don't a table have bat, like, an yeah. identifier, yeah. It's always very awkward. You're just really just kind of walking around and yeah. unless you're really extroverted <laughs> and then you can just go up and, oh my God, okay, I'm on the <laughs> We love it. 
look at nothing. I know. <laughs> I love Kevin's. Well, this should be another uh, criteria for, for one of our next board members that they need to be extroverted. <laughs> <laughs> at least one. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I don't know that it's something that we absolutely should. Um, mm -hmm. It isn't so much uh, they're positioning it in a way that doesn't sound as threatening, but it really is about preventing child abuse. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a heavy topic, but it's treated in a lighthearted way to invite families to come and and have you know a good time activities for the kids. But there's a serious message. So if we felt that that was something important for us to have a presence, that I'd bring it to everybody's attention. I guess my thinking is might be worth waiting to we've like got the purpose, the badges, yeah. and essentially like giving the event organizers a heads up. Um, like, hey, like we plan to be there, or can we even have a table and like like a more formal presence? Nice. Um, I don't know that just kind of walking around would would do much. Um, I don't and, think and like you know kind of cold chatting people up, but but I mean I would be happy to, to go. The idea for yeah. the name badges and the mm -hmm. desire to have a statement of purpose that is succinct. Yeah. I positioned it as an elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, came out of some of the events that we attended where the police department did have a table. And so at least we kind of had a place right, to, right. to congregate and um, introduce ourselves if people came around that area. So, all right. Also, well, I think as our, um, as like our presence in the community becomes more known, I don't actually necessarily think that that's the best use of our time. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like just being at an event and, and chit chatting with people, I think it's fine, but it isn't really as effective, I think, as some of these other ways. And if you think we're a volunteer board and how can we best use our time most mm -hmm. effectively, I, I'm i not sure that those types of have sitting at a table and meeting people isn't always, I don't know if that's the most effective. Yeah, I think that's a Okay, we are going on eight o'clock. Um, I don't think we know anything uh, as far as updates from board members, subcommittees. We briefly mm -hmm. had broken out into some subcommittees to tackle some work they wanted to get done, mm -hmm. but they really haven't been active recently. Um, but if anybody has something, John, you were going to take a look at that. PowerPoint deck that was really a dump from the survey, and maybe make some judgments on what what might be worthwhile sharing. I looked for it once a while back. There's some things. Yeah, there's not a lot there, but I still feel like we need to acknowledge that hey, it happened. And so maybe next meeting we can talk about you know what if anything we want to acknowledge. Back in 2020, I yeah, think is when the survey first went out. It was open for quite a long time. Um, and so we have some uh, responses. I might have sent you, you did. the one that said survey says. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was so there, there's a survey and I can uh, Give you the link to the overall results so you can see the pie charts mm -hmm. of what the responses were. Those were all the open ended responses okay. that were in it. So I will be sure to share that with you. Okay. Um, but I still, it, it niggles at me that we, we did a survey and we didn't follow up. And that was one of the things when I took marketing research and and getting, if you ask for community input, that you owe it to give some kind of feedback about. Thanks for giving us. Right. Well, we did get the last thing we kind of went around and talked about the different themes that we saw. Yes, we uh, did. And that may be, you know, my view would be it's those are kind of things that we saw as themes that we could kind of, you know, push out information about. But I, 
I think that, in my opinion, that may be the use of that survey on a day to be. I mentioned this I'm happy to work on revamping that and doing it again. Um, yes, I and think, I think so we'll just decide when. Yeah. But, 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 but there are there's a half dozen themes there, are six that would be, hey, here are issues that kind of, from the board's point of view, came out and we're going to address these or continue to move forward to you know, provide information. And, right. I mean, I do, I, my thought also on that is that then because it was 2020 and we're now in 2023, it's, you know, the feedback is important and the, the transparency or sharing sort of like the themes I think is important, but action items on things that were important three years ago seem like, ooh, I don't know if we want to take action on something that three years ago the right. community said was important and they may not feel that way now. So maybe at some point, if we get more solidified around what do we want to do with some of those things, we can acknowledge that this was, you know, identified. Well, one of them was a pop of Shabayo. Shamim Komeche, that's in the works. Um, if I remember it correctly, like the idea of humanizing and, and yes. sharing more about our officers um, was something that came up a couple of times. Sorry, I'm, I'm starting to like brainstorm mentally. Uh, yeah. I'm always thinking about what more might be on our web page to be responsive because we know very few people dial in for our meetings or come in person. And so maybe on our website, we as we map out things that are coming, we'll definitely, we'll say, we have this new feedback form. We've started to run social media posts right. periodically. That maybe we have a little part on our website that says, you know, here's what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I always love when I see, you know, we heard you told us this, we're doing this, like, like just that direct correlation. Like we heard this, and now we're mm -hmm. here's how we're acting on that. Um, and that that always makes for good social posts too. Um, but I like that idea of having a designated spot on our our website. We could even. Kind of, if we were comfortable with it, kind of keep a tally, if you will, or like the, you know, the you know we're we're hearing this many comments, almost like a little dashboard, and like here's what we're hearing, here's what we're doing to act on that. Um, if we had it up there, but it's like no, no feedback submitted right, this way. Right. Please, I haven't heard anything yet. Yeah, <laughs> give us something to do. <laughs> oh my god, very good. Um. Do we know anything yet about the scheduling for this DEI training for the city or has that kind of been pushed back? I had <clears throat> my, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a regular meeting with the city mayor this morning. <clears throat> excuse me, and she did not mention. I think that um, they have it where it's going to be in place and scheduled, but it hasn't been scheduled yet. I think they were focusing on the strategic plan. So it probably will follow pretty quickly now, but I, I, I can't promise you that. But they do, I mean, they have uh, contracted for it. They're going to uh, schedule it. And as you know, you all have an opportunity to do that if you want. Right. I mean, they will encourage it. Um, that, that reminds me, that as I was kind of poking around the website, um, maybe we're, I might be thinking of the same thing the from that Hicks Carter Hicks like survey. They did in 2021 or audit rather about DEI and like develop establishing a council. I just had that on my random list of questions uh, in terms of how we would be involved with the DEI council and how that partnership may or may may not. I'm not sure if Carter Hicks is the vendor for it or not. To be honest with you, I, yeah. just, I just know that they, excuse me, that they did contract for it. It's a professional um, vendor yeah. that's going to be presented to the council and the board. All of the boards, including ours, will be able to participate in it. And one of the qualifications or one of the suggestions for board members was that they had this training, but again, they're not expected, but again, you're going to, you have to go up and go, they're going to strongly encourage you to do it. Yeah. So we think that perhaps by this summer. I would think by the summer, but again, I can't promise that because I'm, I'm not um, okay. able to schedule it. It's not in my ballpark. No. The scheduling of it. We obviously would be participating. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> <Shut> it. 
And this this item A, new date for Webster U redefining public safety presentation. I need to take that off there. We keep bringing it up, but yeah, is it be. even possible to do it? I mean, it's practically April. Was was this with uh, student participation, or was this a this faculty was a, and staff? This was um, a couple of my colleagues who had done some research and done some work okay. on. Um, stress and psychological kind of mindset of first responders. Mm -hmm. So it's more reflecting on their research that they did. Um, okay. The one person I've talked to, I, I, I don't believe she double checked, but I don't think April will work for her. So we could look to May or June if you want. Okay. But it's being more about their research and kind of how what they learned about working with first responders and okay. uh, education about that, that topic. But, yeah, I guess when you hear back from them, mm -hmm. what yep, might yep, work, yep. that would be there great. You. All right, my last item before we would adjourn would be to talk about a homework assignment. So I mentioned earlier that it was my hope that we could be really collaborative in this board. Um, I think, especially with some of the constraints around online collaboration, because originally I was really jazzed about, oh, we'll break out in committees and we'll get all this work done and then Board meetings will be where we make the decision, but you can't be quite that, you know, nimble as you can in business where you don't have sunshine off right. to contend with. So my next uh, idea was that perhaps people would want to sign up for a topic that they are passionate about and that a single person can come up with ideas and a plan and then present that to the board. And we could make more progress on multiple fronts. Otherwise, a once a month meeting is very hard to get a lot accomplished. Um, and I don't like to keep people, you know, past 8.30. Everybody's got families to get home to and such. So um, I listed a couple thought starters some of uh, many of them, they were referenced in that uh, survey feedback. Some of them are conversations I've had with others of you here. Um, so the first responder alternatives for mental health. I had seen a really great presentation from Behavioral Health Response, and it was yeah. about their um, uh, collaboration with the city of St. Louis Police Department and how they've set it up. And this had tons of data about sort of the impact and um, the benefits. And there's also the, the 988 for mental health emergency number that I don't think is well known. Oh, that's another social media idea. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, would you be... Or are we open to having like a guest speaker? So I was thinking, you know, like I have known people at BHR over the years. I'm like, I was trying to think, do I know anybody at BHR right now? But even if I don't, I probably know, know somebody who knows somebody. Um, what maybe a speaker? I mean, they have. Wonder what you what do you think about that? I think it would be really interesting to have a guest speaker. Okay. Um, well, and in athletes, Don's colleagues coming, right? Being, That's great, you know, guest speakers. So, uh, I really hadn't thought further than if we can get people to sign up for a particular area and come up with a proposal for, you know, what might we want to uh, learn as a board about this topic, and then it can turn into the focus of a board, a future board meeting was what I was thinking. Well, I'll take the topic of alternatives for mental health crisis interventions. I thought you would. Yeah. <laughs> um, another one uh, that comes up is equity in policing. Uh, that old survey, uh, back then traffic stops reports were really a, a hot topic. I think that's, you know, for various reasons, it's looking at one narrow measure, but the concept of equity and policing might be an interesting one for our mm -hmm. board to look at. Probably didn't do that in June if the report comes up. I mean, I think I, I know I mentioned to you the last meeting. It's not good news. That can be any better than it was last year. And 
mm -hmm. the primary driver, as we did, we discussed it, is that the black population went down again. So our residential uh, st stops of residents and uh, the number of stops remain steady. The population has continued to go down, which causes our numbers to go up. One thought that I'd had about that is it's because we have such a small black population Webster Groves is I wonder if there is a different way to, to look at that ratio and really look at sort of regional populations it's, so you're not dividing it by and there is a I mean there's obviously there's a lot of literature on that and nobody's been able to come up with a perfect plan a much better barometer would be a 10 mile radius that's one of the things we talked about in terms of the thriving population uh, it's still probably not probably, it would still be a little bit high, but it'd be a much better barometer of mm -hmm. the disparity rate as opposed to this area because we have a lot of transient, transient driving population coming from the city. Like we said, less than 12% of our stops this year were residents. Okay, so that's the first one. But community policing was another topic that I, you know, saw some feedback on the survey. I've also been interested, um, but I really don't know too much about, you know, what is the impact of implementing a community policing approach. I'm sure that it has implications for staffing and, you know, other things. And what are the the benefits, what are the drawbacks? Um, you have resource allocation and you choose to do one thing, that means you're choosing not to do something else often. Uh, so if that's an idea that uh, interests someone. Um, another one, and we may have just, I had just seen the Webster Kirkwood Times uh, article about the flock cameras being signed up for in Kirkwood and Chief Curtis, you gave us a lot of insight into those flock cameras, but this was just throwing ideas into the hopper. So Katie has raised her hand for one idea. Perhaps none of these interest you and you wanna think about a topic that you think would be relevant and you're interested in digging into a little more and sharing with the rest of the board, maybe even bringing a guest speaker or offering some materials that you want us to read. Um, it's okay for people to respond to me with their homework to say, hey, I'm interested in doing this topic, right? And then we would just, at the next meeting saying, here's what people have signed up for. Okay. So that's the homework. And Katie's already done her first part. She raised her hand. <laughs> What you know, just out of the spirit of brainstorming, um, and with Jill here, because I feel like you may have some background in this with Fleischman Hillard. Um, and this came up with just Lexi and I have said when when something happens nationally and national news around um you know, something with policing, what could or should our role be in communication or listening or responding or not responding? So that would be something I would be interested in knowing yeah. more about from like a, I don't know, like a communication standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't mean you have to do it today. No, I just was right. like, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's um, so we need a balance, right? That they're never a straightforward answer in terms of what you should do. But yeah, I mean, I would be happy to take that away and, and, and come back with us on that um, to dig down dabble a bit in, in crisis communication but yeah. I think there um and it I mean the short answer is it depends um yeah. and it kind of has to like case by case basis what's the appropriate thing to do um and in any case you're never gonna appease everyone um so it's tough to kind of come up with I would recommend you know if that's something we're interested in doing and I, and I think that's a good call out Kind of making a decision tree, like filling that in as much as we can. You know, if if it is a national event or if it's, you know, maybe we don't respond if it's like outside our state. You know, kind of yeah. giving it some parameters um, and talking through that to help us decide when we do or do not respond to something. Like, yeah, right. So, and there's probably a tree that you know the city when they're 
um, yeah. public affairs person yeah. follows, but um, I think we can only be helpful, you know, by, you know, and, and then in turn deciding, well, is this something then that we want to respond to with perhaps more information around that area on the website? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So share. Yeah. We know what the police policy is, but she said there's 300 pages of them. So perhaps we can give like a, a little summary of basically we know people are concerned right. in light of this. And mm -hmm. so we thought you might want to know what our policy is yeah. for this matter. I think that would be great in terms of the goal of being transparent and, and you know, trying to take a national incident and, and kind of localizing it a bit. Like here's, here's what this might mean in our community. Um, here's how we're you know, imp implement, implementing training or whatnot to ensure it's not going to happen or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Question around that, um, I don't mean to keep that scared longer, but if our means of communication is through the city, like using their social channels, I imagine, you know, there's still kind of a policy we need to follow or kind of getting approval from the city. Oh, for the... Yeah, you know, for the, we're going to put something out there. I assume that... Oh, yeah, we, in fact, it would go through... Like, I think it would, it would go be, through Jenny Saki, yeah, okay. who is... Yep. She runs the social yeah. channel for the city. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it would need to be in lockstep with whatever the city is doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that could be interesting if they're maybe choosing not to respond on something if we want to, or we just have to have a discussion around that. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah let, me, let me take that away, though, as-, as Okay, um, right. You know, just right. Kind of putting together a parameter that we tell clients um, and kind of applying it there. Okay. All right. Seconds of public comment. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's invite the public to comment. <laughs> um, my daughter uh, called somewhat, not hysterical, but concerned about what happened in Nashville mm -hmm. because she has a, I have a five year old grandson that's going to be starting kindergarten next year. So there's a lot of that going around. And as an idea, uh, we talked about a little bit before and what the police response is to an event like that locally. Uh, you can't share exactly what the response is because you, you don't want to let the folks know how, how you're going to specifically respond to it. But just in general, what safety precautions have the Webster Grove School District implemented? Um, to try to to try to these families um, concerns keeps happening over and over again. Yeah. yeah, that is that's not anything I can admit. Um, we we want to coordinate with yeah. with you know as you said, the schools, the police department, but it's certainly a very serious topic and it definitely is in the realm of public safety. I mean, right. And, and protect our ties kids. into the mental health um, crisis interventions because there's just so many of these things that are, you know, caused by that. <laughs> All right, do I have any other items? Uh, do we want to adjourn the meeting? Does anyone want to move that we adjourn? I think Jill should go first. How do I do that? I move to adjourn. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Bye. Hey, Bye Scott. Hey, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Scott, I might yeah. stop back by in September when I'm back in town and, and uh, say hi. Good. To you again. Or we That'd can, be great. Or we can get together. Yeah. Soon.
Please, please. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah. Good luck with everything. All right. Bye. Thank yeah. you. Right. Bye.